Thank you very much for joining us on Film Speak. My name is Andy Ruri. Now, it's all about films, films and more films. And guess what? This week I've got something very exciting from, from Judy Kibinga from her film, The Killer Necklace. It's the first film in Africa to be shot using the Red One camera. Now, here's the short review of the movie. The Killer Necklace is a killer film. It captures the story of a young man in love, but unfortunately, he is as broke as a joke and can't even open a wine bottle. I'm just a student. It kicks off with a crane shot that establishes what the main character is up against, not forgetting his broke background. All the girl wants is a necklace. I can't die for that necklace. Unfortunately, the boy is not in a position to. Bogwa's character, the young man in love, is well built. We have his backstory. His sick grandma. No more. I not as a the death of his brother, and with his ongoing studies, he has no source of income, which leaves him with one option. <laughs> Joining the gang. <laughs> the gangster. A ruthless but a caring king of the slum. They call you a thief. Me, I collect. And this is poor man's tax. My favorite scene of the movie, the fight scene. Hey, 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 hey. No! Do not laugh! No! No! Quick cuts are making the scene intense. Lighting up the black African skin has never been an easy task, but the film has fully captured the vast colors of our skin and plays very well with the background. Then there are always those cast members. Her convincing bit doesn't work out. Acting is believing. Now let's get to talk to Judy Kibinge. The thing that I love about Kid and Eclis is there are mm. mo moments I think of great poetry in it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just the story that moves. There, there I, I think are just moments of reflection within it. Mm. There's this yeah, one. There's yeah. Yes, there's this one really good <laughs> shot and mm. uh, we had this conversation earlier where we talked right. about the black skin right. and lighting it up, which has always been a na major issue mm -hmm. uh, for most cinematographers. Uh, did you experience the same? No, and I think it's really funny, but mm -hmm. I mean, even all the way back shooting The mm -hmm. Aftermath, my very, very first mm -hmm. film, which was all the way back in 2002, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people kept talking about this, you know, black skin being so difficult to light, but it mm. wasn't, you mm. know, even even then. I think, again, a lot to do with the cinematographer understanding how to use whatever tool it is. And it doesn't just have to be a red. It's mm -hmm. it's really, the you know, the skills of the person <laughs> behind the camera mm. and, and knowing how not to, to light too harshly and how to balance mm. skin tone off, off backgrounds mm. and so on. Uh, one enormous uh, benefit that the, the mm. red had is it could shoot in very low light. Where do you get most of your financing from? I mean, it depends. I think mm -hmm. if you look at that uh, Vijana film mm. fund, I think the terms were completely unreasonable. Mm. Uh, if you're going to borrow money for to, to, to make a, a film, mm -hmm. you cannot pay back in six months or whatever. The, the, no. the, there was a clause that was impossible. Mm -hmm. and, and to borrow that money was to know that you were going to go bankrupt soon. Oh. I think uh -huh. the, the, the fund itself had it's best into the best interest at heart. It's mm -hmm. obviously run by Bruce Diambo, a great sort of um, fan of the arts, a great mm -hmm. artist himself, mm -hmm. fantastic music producer. Mm -hmm. But I think they really never thought about, mm -hmm. you know, they were asking young people to, to, to have um, security in, yeah. in the form, I suppose, of, of property or cars or hello, why am I yeah, getting this, this a fund if, if I can mm. maybe sell my car and <laughs> shoot the film of my dreams? So yeah. it wasn't reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, you might be surprised, do I run a fund as well? Uh, mm -hmm. It's called DocuBox. It's about yeah. three years mm -hmm. old. Um, and the reason as a filmmaker I started mm. um, that fund some years back is, is exactly this problem. So many people I need think to watch this. Where like do you get it for from? For those with uh, cable station network that will remain nameless. <laughs> Please write <laughs> and ask them to show these uh -huh. these new direction movies more often, mm -hmm. because I think you know amongst them there were a lot of great films. Wanori well, mm. Kahio had a new directions film. Mm. I had one as well. Mm -hmm. um, Kajetan Boy, I think, yeah. had one too. Yeah. So Kajetan Boy, I've seen uh, several of his films. Yeah. Out there. But yeah. you know we need yeah. we need to walk into a bookshop or a supermarket and get these films. Distribution. That Distribution. is our greatest challenge. 
greatest challenge. And yeah. I think I'm challenging anyone to, who's watching this to yeah. try and crack a system of distribution. We need yeah. it. The filmmakers need it. Yeah. Um, if only we could walk, walk into Chumi or Nakumat or, I don't know, Tuskies yeah. or, or any or yeah, Naiva just <laughs> and just know that without fail, we'll yeah. find a whole wall of yeah. Kenyan films. I think it would be so great. So job opportunities in the yes, film industry. A big one. Opening up. Biggest. We need distributors in this. Yeah. So thank you very much, Judy, for coming Kay. through for us. Thank you. And thank you uh, so much. All right. Cool. I'll see you next time. All right. Okay. See you next time. Thank you very much for joining us on Film Speak. That was Judy Kibinge. That's all for this week. Mm -hmm.